Good morning, ma'am. My name is Otis Patel, and for my digital assignment three, I will be presenting on the topic smart locks. So, what are smart locks, and how are they better better than the traditional locks? Well, have you ever been in a situation such that you have forgotten whether you have locked the door or not? So, uh, with the help of smart locks, we can instantly check with the help of a mobile whether the door is locked or not. The smart in this te uh, technology context refers to the lock's ability to connect to other technology. This lock can connect to your mobile, uh, to your Wi-Fi and help you. So how do these smart locks work? These smart locks can either be uh, unlocked using a mobile, like uh, entering a pin on your mobile, or you can just enter the pin manually on the lock itself. These uh, do not use keys and uh, are usually controlled by a mobile phone. How are smart locks uh, related to the theory of computation? We have a topic uh, in our electronics course named sequence detectors. So what are sequence detectors? Sequence detectors are essentially machines which take a certain input and if the input matches the code which was given to them, then they, they will give an output. If the code doesn't match, then they will reset. So these machines are of two types, Mealy machine and Murray machine. Uh, Mealy machine and Murray machine are essentially finite sheet machines which will take the input and if the input is matching, then they will proceed on to the final state. An application of the sequence detectors is a smart lock. Uh, so implementing these smart locks with the help of a Turing machine, uh, we'll go to the whiteboard. So we are thinking maybe like uh, such a normal code. So why can't we instead do it with the help of a finite automata? So we will start uh, with a finite automata and then we'll see how instead we should use a Turing machine. So we can take in this uh, normal password like 583 or something, but creating a finite automata will be a little harder for this, like it will just be lengthier. So we'll just take a binary input like 1011. So creating a finite automata, accepting 1011. So we'll have a start state. We'll have the first, second, and third. Since it is a four bit number, we will have five states. Let's name the states A, B, C, D, e, e. Draw the transition edges. Part. So this automata will accept the number 1011. So when the input is 1, we will proceed to the next state. And then input is 0, we will again proceed further. And then input is 1, we will proceed further. And finally, when we get the number, we'll proceed on to the final state. And this is like the most basic accepting string uh, for this finite automata. Now, if instead we are like given an input 1, 1 something, 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is incorrect. So the finite automata should reset 1, 1. It should not accept this. So that's why we will, uh, my bad, we will will create a transition for all the wrong inputs, the starting state, the user. Zero, zero, we will have transition edge to the starting state. And similarly for D, we also have a transition for the zero. So this is the most basic automata, which accepts the language, uh, the string 1011. So when we put the password on 011, this will unlock the door. The E state is something which will unlock the door. So how can we make this a little more complex? So Turing machine can uh, with the help of Turing machine. Let's add a couple functions such that like every time if the user inputs a wrong password, a incorrect password, so it should give an message to the lock to take a picture of the user who is putting the wrong password. One more thing which we could do is give the user a certain number of tries, let's say five. So after five tries, uh, the lock should just halt, like it should not work anymore, and it should start taking a video of the user along with the audio. So uh, these picture, we could, we could implement it with the help of Pinnet Automata, but the video, we can't implement it with the finite automata because it requires uh, like extra alphabet like stack. So we'll be using a Turing machine. Uh, as we know, 
the conversion of a, like the basic automata, we can just uh, it will be just the same for the Turing machine. So we'll just create that first. For n bits, there will be n plus one states. Let us name the states A, B, C, D, E. Start. Now, uh, uh, let's complete this. As we know, in the Turing machine, we have a tape head. So for each correct input, the tape head goes to the next in, uh, next input. So when the input is one, uh, we are accepting the password one zero one one. So when the tape of input is one, the tape head will proceed further. The tape head is when the next input is zero, the tape head goes further. It it just skips because uh, like the basic pinout automata. If you want to create a Turing machine, we can just skip all of them. No need to include stacks, uh, stack alphabets. So for the next input one, we will again skip, and for the final input one. We will take our machine to E. Now, in a Turing machine, the final state after the string is written, we have blank. So, after reading a blank, the machine will halt. State F. Well, now let us uh, implement our two functions. So, let the let's create a state P for our picture function. So creating state P. So now every time when we give a wrong input, so like for example, wrong input is one zero zero one. So one zero, so zero zero. So one zero zero from here, it should not go further. So we'll go to the picture state. When our input is zero, we will go to the picture state. We'll go a little backward. And from the pic in the picture state, what we'll do is like, uh, as we know, there are blank symbols present before the input also. So after we have reached zero, we'll skip all the elements to the back and we'll reach the final B. And then we'll first skip all of those elements. In place of zero, we'll go back. In place of one, we'll go back. I'll just create some space over here. In place of one. We'll go back. All right, now we have reached the blank symbol. Uh, now when we reach the blank symbol, uh, we need to replace this blank symbol with some certain uh, any alphabet. So just to keep account of how many times the user has given the wrong input. So we'll replace the blank symbol with say stack alphabet S. Then we'll proceed further. Now uh, after replacing the S, just with S, the tape head will come over here and then it will start again. So now for the input, like let's just create uh, the transition is for all wrong inputs. So like we see, uh, like you saw above, when here it is one, the tape head will go to take a picture. Similarly for D state, when the input is zero, the tape head will go to take a picture. This is an incorrect edge. Should be reverse. Okay. Now, one more thing. Like, uh, for example, if we have one zero one one, and we have already replaced something. Like, uh, this is the second try. So already one one B blank will be replaced. So now, when we read this, it is incorrect. So it will again go back. Now we also need to skip this particular S to go back. So we will also include a S over here. Then it will proceed on to this B and then it will skip the B. Now uh, after skipping the uh, it will replace the B with an S. After replacing the B with an S, the tape head will be over here. But now the tape head does not have a one or zero to proceed ahead. So we'll have to create a self loop over here such that it should skip all the S and proceed further. 
then this will run five times. So now after five times, like uh, after we get five s over here, we need to we need our tape to take six. After this happens five times, we need our uh, we need our machine to stop working and it should take a video of the user. So we'll just create another chain over here. Of the first S. Yeah. Similarly for the rest, we can just push keep pushing the automata uh, the Turing machine ahead. First, second, third. Till it reaches. Till it reaches five stack alphabets. As soon as it reaches the fifth. S fifth stack S, it should halt. So here, the, uh, we will start taking a video. Let's name this state as V. It will start recording a video over here. Just name this like normal X Y Z G. And here V is a rejecting state where uh, the lock will not open and video it will be taken. And let's say just a timer for thirty seconds will be displayed. And F is an our accepting state which unlocks the door. This will be our Turing machine for the language when zero and one. Uh, there is one small flaw with this machine is that uh, in case after the user inputs five times, like five incorrect times, the machine will still go like uh, we are skipping all stack alphabets over here. So machine will still go ahead over here. So like if there are six of them, the machine should not work. But uh, since we have a self loop, it will still skip all of them and it will again read. So like. To fix this, we could just create like multiple states over here, but we will just uh, like let it be. So this is a Turing machine for the language when zero and one. Uh, same machine is made over here. As you can see, we yes, ask. Uh, we are accepting one, zero, one, one for the blank. That F is our accepting state for which the lock will unlock, and V is our rejecting state for which the uh, lock will take a video. Uh, these are the references. Uh, YouTube Jerry Rick channel from which I got the idea of smart locks, the product which was used in this video, and just a small heads up on uh, the sequence detectors. Uh, thank you and the video link will be updated soon. Thank you.